What's up, nerds? So, Aventurine's character preview, as well as his light cone preview, came out last night. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. This video will be focused in on the light cone preview, and I'll make a separate video for the character preview, going over the traces and his entire kit, etc., etc. Because I know some people like it separated. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at this light cone. Now, I need a first preface by saying, when I first read this, I initially thought, oh my god, this light cone is so good. But then I read it again, and I was like, wait a minute. This is bait! Like, this light cone is kind of lightweight, a bit of bait. Now, let's go ahead and talk about why. There's a lot of bright lights and flashing colors and big, cool, juicy numbers on here. But he doesn't really need all of this. Okay, let's get into it. It increases the wearer's defense by 40%. That's a nice, juicy number to take a look at, right? We'll break this down afterwards. Let's read the whole thing. When the wearer provides a shield to an ally, the wearer's crit damage increases by 40%, lasting for two turns. When the wearer's follow-up attack hits an enemy target, there is a 100% base chance to increase the damage taken by the attacked enemy target by 10%, lasting for two turns. Okay, so let's break this down a little bit here. My favorite part of the entire light cone is actually this bottom part right here. This debuff, this is a debuff, and this will trigger Acheron's talent. It's a nice little juicy thing. However, it's gate kept behind effect hit rate because 100% base chance is not enough to be able to guarantee that this debuff will land because enemies have resistances. So you have to actually exceed 100% in order to be able to get this to land. He doesn't need effect hit rate in the rest of his kit. The rest of his kit, which I'll go over in a separate video, does not need effect hit rate to function. So it feels like buying something that's, it feels like buying a problem. It feels like buying like an old MacBook. You know, like Apple products? And when you buy an Apple product, you need like seven different adapters just so that you can like use it like a normal device. That's what it feels like. It feels like buying something that should work out of the box but then now you have to buy, you have to like build an adapter for it for it to work, which is the effect hit rate. That's essentially the adapter here. So I don't like that. I think if you put a lot of effort into getting a light cone like this, it should just work out of the box. You shouldn't have to keep building the character yet more. It's supposed to help you have the character built, not make it harder to build the character. Like what the hell? Anyways, I'm gonna stop yapping about that. Yeah, I, I really like this defense number. Defense by 40%. That's a good juicy number. That's, I don't really have much to say negatively about that at all. That's a nice, big, juicy number. I love to see that number. Honestly, it's a bit excessive. Um, it's like a little bit bigger than a lot of his other options that he could have on other cones. But it's like not that much better. He doesn't necessarily super duper need it. He's going to have a ton of his own defense already, and he gets some of that in his traces, etc., etc., and so he doesn't really necessarily need that big of a number, but it's fine. I love this number. I'm not complaining about that, right? That's fine. Whatever. It's cool. But when the wearer provides a shield to an ally, which he does very often, the wearer's crit damage increases by 40%, lasting for two turns. That's not your team. That's not your main DPS. That's him. And that's only him, the wearer of the light cone that gets that bonus. Now, you should build him for crit because he's built. He, that's how his kit works, okay? Uh, just so that you guys are aware, he has a trace, for example, just so that you guys have a little bit of a clue here. Um, he gets a really, really fat amount of crit rate from one of his traces, for example. I'm not going to give you the exact multiplier because I'm not really supposed to do that, but it's a lot, okay? It's a lot, okay? We're talking about we're talking about close to Jingli Yu numbers here, okay? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, all right? Now, let's, let's get back on track here. Uh, oh, that's not the right place. My bad. I'm so stupid. Okay. His 40% crit damage, it's really, really nice. It's really, really juicy. However, he doesn't have a ton of his own base damage to begin with. So this the easiest way I can like explain this to you is that uh, a DPS character gets a lot more out of their crit damage than he's going to be able to get because their damage is way, way higher, right? That's just the way that it kind of works. That's the way that like the damage formula will kind of work. That's the easiest way that I could put it is that he's not necessarily going to get as much from this really, really big juicy number as you probably think that he will. Why do you think this is such a big number? 40%? That's massive, bro. It's because he doesn't have a lot of innate damage 
like of his own he needs a fat crit multiplier like this for it to like kind of like be really effective there are other bonuses that you could be giving him that i actually kind of like more which is like something like destiny threads for woven we'll go over the light cones the other options in just a moment i just want to show you this right here he can get up to 48 percent damage increase from this light cone at super imposition 5 this is a newer light cone but you can get it from the forgotten hall shop so every player can get this and take it to s5 i like this cone for him more than i like his signature cone for him which is kind of wild um but let's go ahead and just take a quick peek at his signature light cone and before we start taking a look at all the other light cones i mean i think that's kind of it right defense bonus really great rip bonus yeah that's good i'm not i'm not like actually truly complaining about it i'm just trying to get you guys to understand this stuff is not as powerful as you guys probably think it will be this the best part of the light cone is this debuff right here and it's locked behind effect hit rate not a big fan of this i consider this light cone to be good it is very good for him but you really and i mean really really don't need this for him okay this is a skip in my personal opinion if you want the character you really love the character he's like your favorite he's your husbando whatever go for it dude don't let me stop you i'm just trying to like kind of put out the information that you don't really need this like acheron acheron doesn't need her signature light cone but she gets a ton out of her signature light cone right this is a little bit different where he doesn't need this and he does get a lot out of it but it's not as substantial or it's not as like strong as like acheron having her light cone for example that's the easiest way i can probably put that now let's take a look at some of these other light cones um before i start yapping too much so firstly i just want to say um if you build him for an acheron team you need to be using trend of the universal market or his signature because of the debuff uh when the wear is defense uh when the wear oh it increases the wear's defense by 16 percent when the wear is attacked there is a 100 percent base chance to burn the enemy for each turn uh, the wear deals a DOT that is equal to 40% of the wear's defense for two turns. So, this is at super imposition one. And yeah, I did just kind of complain about the 100% base chance on his signature light cone, but you're probably not going to have super impositions of his signature, so you're not going to increase that base chance. The thing is, you can increase the base chance of this light cone by having Eidolons. At super imposition five, for example, this is a 120% base chance. This is so close to guaranteeing that it will land that you do not need to build effect hit rate if you have this light cone at S5. Straight up, you just don't, right? Um, but this is the light cone you want to use if you have an Acheron team, if you don't have his signature, okay? So Trend, I really like Trend. And I mentioned this earlier, Destiny's Threads for Woven. Really love this cone. Now I need to point out a really, really good hint for why this light cone is so good on adventuring right it's obviously it just does really good stuff that synergizes with him well but there's a really big hint on this light cone that it works really well on him and i'm not talking about the fact that he's actually on this particular light cone right here this is actually adventuring that's not the hint increases the wear's effect res by 20 percent yo that is actually so good you this is going to help him prevent crowd control problems and it's two-thirds of the way to broken keel broken keel is a very good uh it's a very very good relic set for characters such as adventuring anyways let's move forward for every 100 of defense the wearer has it increases the wearer's damage dealt by 1.2 percent up to a maximum damage increase of 48 percent love this for him absolutely love this for him now let's go ahead and take a look at that hint like i said this is probably my favorite light cone for him because you like it's it's so good like it's almost as good as his signature like it's actually really really good um for every 100 of the defense remember that for every 100 defense let's take a look at his hit oh for every 100 of adventuring's defense that exceeds a certain value it increases his own crit rate up to a maximum limit notice the exact same terminology was used 100% of Aventurine's defense. Yeah, sure, it says that it has to exceed a certain number before it actually starts to tick up, but this is the same terminology, 100% of the defense. 100% of the defense. You know what I mean? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. It's a little bit of a hint right there. Love Destinies. This is me. This is a rare moment where 
one of the uh what is it the one hour later oh yeah the battle pass okay so this is when the battle pass light cone actually is good a rare moment right it increases the wear the wearer's defense by 16 percent good increases the damage of the wearer's um ultimate by 60 percent of the wearer's defense yo this effect only applies one time per enemy target during each of the wearer's ultimates um at super in position five he gets 32 percent defense oh that's pretty good that's pretty good that's like close to his signature not like super close but it's pretty noteworthy close and 120 percent bonus to his ultimate bro bro and, and you might be sitting there thinking to yourself like oh but it only affects one enemy at a time or whatever like guess what his ultimate only hits one enemy target bro his ult literally where is it inflicts a nerve deals imaginary damage to a single target enemy this is actual synergy bro like this actually works with his ult like this this actually works i can't even believe this is me i wasn't expecting this is me to like ever do anything <laughs> but it's actually good on adventuring so i love destiny threads or woven i love this is me i love trend trend is the one you want to use if you're using it with acheron destiny is pretty much for everything else this is me is pretty much for everything else okay but just be aware this is the battle pass cone if you don't have the battle pass don't ever you're not you're just not gonna ever get this okay so just be aware of that um now let's go over the other cones um but the other cones in my opinion are like not as good they're good for survivability he doesn't really have a bad cone but the other cones just don't really give him what he really wants He's such a reliable shield character, he doesn't really need the extra survivability from something like Texture of Memories. The best part about Textures of Memories for him is actually the effect res. Everything else doesn't really matter because he is already such a reliable unit for sustainability anyway. Um, now let's go ahead and point something out about uh, Fu Xuan's signature. because. Some people at first glance think, oh my gosh, Fu Xuan's signature is actually going to work really well on him because it, every time he takes damage, all allies' damage dealt increases by 9%, lasting for two turns. This is really good on him. That would be true. Um, and this energy regeneration rate by 12%, that's good. But there's a problem. He doesn't need the max HP. He doesn't need to heal anybody because he's preventing damage, right? So he doesn't... He's he has such good shields, he doesn't need to heal people because he's just going to prevent the damage from ever happening, right? Um, the problem is, because he uses shields, he's not going to take damage very often, is he? So this 9% bonus is basically never going to work. So I really don't like her signature for him, specifically. Um, it's really amazing on her, it's just not that good on him. Now, Gepard's Light Cone gives him a really fat defense bonus. Love it. Gives him some effect hit rate. Again, he doesn't need that um, unless he unless you have a signature. But if you have a signature, you can't run this at the same time. You get you know what I'm saying? Anyways, increases the chance for the wearer to be attacked by enemies. That initially looks good, right? But I actually don't necessarily like that. When I use a preservation character that uses shields, I actually want my other units to usually get hit because they won't take damage and they'll just gain energy for free instead. So I actually wish you could turn this off. For adventuring specifically, I wish you could turn this off because he doesn't really need it. Unless your team's kind of on the weaker side or you're a little bit of a newer player, then that's nice to have that on him. But personally, I'd rather all my other units get attacked when I have a shield on them because they're just gonna gain you know, energy for free, like I said. When the wearer is attacked, it increases their defense by an extra 24% until the end of the wearer's turn. This would be cool, except that it ends after his turn. He has follow-up attacks and other things like that that take place. He won't get this extra defense, which will not help his increased damage. Unfortunately, Shepard's Light Cone is good for him because of the base stat and because of like the solid defense stat that he can get from it. But it's just, again, it's just a good, reliable cone. It's not something he like needs in my opinion. Now, day one of my new life, I actually kind of like this because it increases the wearer's defense, but after entering battle, it increases the all type resistance of all of your allies. Love that. However, it's the all type resistance. It, do they really need it if he has shields? It doesn't really, they don't really need it if he has shields, right? So again, 
Landau's choice also good. However, again, you just it's just survivability. All these other light cones are just there for survivability. My personal opinion, trend for Acheron teams, destiny for basically everything else. If you have this is me, that also works too instead of destiny. Those are the light cones I really, really like. You guys put whatever you want on him. I've been yapping way too much. So if you found this helpful or informative in any way, shape or form, uh, consider leaving a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. And stay tuned for the character preview, which I'll be putting up later tonight. Peace out.